Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Hello and welcome to the COB here at AusBiz. I'm Andrew Gagan. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Well, let's take a look at where we finished the week and uh, to be, in fact, well, in fact, it looks as though we don't have a chart if you're looking, but there we go, it's popped up. Uh, half a percent, essentially, where we finished on the CBO 200. I was taking a look at the ASX 200, and uh, that's up around four tenths to be down about one percent for the week. So probably not a bad result, given that particularly those sharp falls that we saw on Wednesday, which uh, as the local market followed global markets down sharply on that day. Well, let's uh, take a look at those themes for today. And you only have to take a look at what's moving on the index at the moment. The banks have bounced again. In fact, uh, led by uh, the biggest banks uh, with CBA up more than 1.5%. Uh, ANZ, in fact, the pick of them up almost 2% at this point. Uh, whereas commodities crushed. Yes, uh, we take a look at the materials sector. That's pretty much in the red, aside from the gold producers at this point. Uh, we've got the likes of BHP off uh, 1% and uh, also poised for payrolls, of course. All eyes will be on the non-farm payrolls data out of the States tonight that may give that final piece of the puzzle before the Fed meets to cut. The question is by how much? Well, let's uh, check those sectors that we are on the move. And as I mentioned, the bank's very much in focus given they have dragged the broader market higher today, led by the likes of ANZ, which uh, has finished up almost 2%. Macquarie up to and a quarter percent. Elsewhere, as I said, a different story among the miners uh, with uh, BHP and uh, Rio down. Fortescue marginally higher at this point. And in terms of the energy producers, they've also been in the reds. We have seen the oil price come off quite considerably and Woodside is down almost 4%. Catching up with the top corporate stories of the day, well, Woodside has dropped after it sold $3 billion of bonds in the US market overnight to partially fund its US acquisitions. And dental chain Pacific Smiles has fallen after announcing that Chief Executive Andrew Vidler is stepping down. All right, well, let's get across what we've seen today. Maps more broadly for the week. Welcome to the COB. Grady Wolf from Bell Direct. Grady, good to catch up with you. Good way to end the week. How would you describe what you've seen on the market this week? I guess bearing in mind what happened on Wednesday as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a very volatile week. And I think today's gains definitely offset some of the losses in the market this week. So that was a positive end to the week with the bankers obviously pushing our markets to a close, a positive close today, just literally right now. Now, this week was an interesting week. Obviously, it started off with the negativity from the US or midweek because they were closed uh, on Monday for the Labor Day holiday. But I think we just it just goes to show that the markets are so heavily driven by the US right now, even with what's going on in Australia. Like we had, uh, we just finished earnings season and it was surprised to the upside for our retailers, but retailers came under pressure this week. So I guess it just is a sentiment of the moments right now in the markets right now, what we can expect moving forward, that the US is still the dominant market player. Yeah, very much so. And uh, clearly NVIDIA being one of those big market drivers and boy, didn't it move this week as well. Although Absolutely. interesting to see, you know, the likes of uh, Bank of America analysts, they're still rating it as a buy. Yeah, it's interesting because their outlook is for growth into, I think it was 35 or $33 billion in revenue for Q3. And that is notable growth. And so everyone started to question whether NVIDIA could really justify this valuation that they have, and they just continue to grow. So obviously with growth says valuation is justified. But I think the market were expecting a little bit more from their Q2 results and their Q3 outlook. So it just goes to show that in that markets and investors are really expecting a lot from these valuations and are really starting to pull back with the um, with the sentiment of de decline, declining growth over the next uh, for over the next few months. So, Grady, looking at the market today, probably a good example there where we saw the banks rise um, and drag the, the broader market higher as a result. Whereas a very different story playing out in the material sector. We know so many of yep. those commodity prices are under pressure at the moment, not the least, of course, being iron ore. Now, I gather you were at a recent mining conference. Yeah. How would you describe sentiment? 
Yeah, I think it's a really kind of interesting time. Obviously, uh, the iron ore price is very much driven by China and the China's advisory board to the steel producers this week said, don't be too optimistic about um, increasing demand, increasing supply, sorry, because demand is set to remain subdued. So that's why we saw the iron ore price come down overnight because the advisory board is saying, don't increase demand just yet. We're not sure what the outlook is. And that just is a tale of China as a whole at the moment. Um, at the Resources Rising Stars Conference, it was really good. I actually saw Koshi there. And it was really interesting to see that investor sentiment is so strong and favourable for copper right now because of its role, not only in the green energy transition, but also in AI, because it's heavily used in the circuits for these AI chips and the different um, computing systems that are needed for AI, which I didn't actually know. So that was something I definitely learned. And it's a, it's driving the demand for copper. But the sentiment is around copper and gold remaining the key commodities over the coming months and over FY25 because of everything that's going on geopolitical tensions, the safe haven nature of gold, um, big banks buying up gold because they, the traditional value of gold being that safe haven asset. R rising geopolitical tensions is also fueling tailwinds for gold and also rate cuts on the horizon. So there's lots fueling this tailwind for gold and there's not enough producers out there and not enough with high grades. So there's a number of stocks that came through as um, really looking to fulfill the downside supply of, the, of gold out there. So Spartan Resources with high grade gold, Gold looking to come in as well in the next few years. We've also got um, Chalice Mining for the copper side, Caravel Minerals with copper. So these are ones that are not quite producers yet, but are looking to be the, to produce in the near future to really um, fulfill that undersupply moving forward for the next decade. So copper and gold, you heard it here. It's um, they're the commodities of the minute. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be fascinating to see. Obviously, you're seeing with the big gold producers that they're uh, uh, benefiting from the higher price of bullion, but yeah. you haven't really seen those at the lower end of the market, particularly the explorers and developers move. No, definitely. Yeah, it's been really interesting. So obviously lithium players, they're still, they're still fighting away at trying to convince investors to buy on in. But I do think lithium has a place in the green energy transition and it's it's probably shouldn't be sitting as low as it is. And there's, there's a few companies in there that are really valuable, like Patriot, Patriot Battery Metals as the largest hard rock deposit in North America. And they're going to be able to fulfill the supply side moving forward. And lithium is always going to be needed. So we, until there's a new battery that removes lithium from these electric vehicle batteries. So mm. with that in mind, lithium will be needed and the hard rock lithium that Patriot has is a massive deposit. I can't even say the name. They've just changed the name to, I think it's the Shakajuanan, um, but I, I'm going to leave that to the CEO, to Ken Brinsden. But the outlook is really strong there and a lot of analysts have actually got a spec buy rating on Patriot battery metals, including Bell Potter, because they do see the value upside in these uh, lithium producers out there. But again, it's been a really tough time for the lithium producers and nickel producers. We saw a few nickel producers at their conference and it's been tough times but there's some really bucking the trend like nickel industries in indonesia they're really causing a stir in the industry right now with how strong they're going and grady um away from the resources sector you've got your eye on fisher and parker why is that yeah yeah, definitely. So normally I, you can hear me on the call saying I love ResMed so much, but Fisher & Paykel has caught my attention recently because of their share price appreciation for one and their optimistic outlook and their increased and revised upgrade for their outlook for FY25. Um, they make about 65% of their revenue in their hospital respiratory systems and then about 35% in the in-home care. And they've seen a real uptick in demand recently for the hospital systems. They have, it's the healthcare company, not the Fisher & Paykel electronics at home. So we're talking about the healthcare side and um, their respiratory products are really increasing in demand right now. So at, like ResMed, um, there was a lot of news headlines that these weight loss miracle drugs were going to deplete the demand for this kind of product, but it really hasn't been the case. And it's really driven a uh, tailwinds for the company because they've just gone from strength to strength. So their FY24 results are really strong. Um, they're diversified also. They've got obviously those two different divisions and also other products under their belt. Um, whereas ResMed is just those core assets that they have. So I think the diversification and the outlook for FY25 is definitely putting Fisher & Paykel on my radar at the moment. Grady, terrific to round up today and the week with you. Thanks for joining us from Bell Direct. Thanks so much for having me. Have a good weekend. All right, well, to our stock of the day. And well, it is that stock that you could uh, well and truly say is the world's most influential, NVIDIA. Bit of a different pick. And Mark Morland from Team Invest and Jubei Lu from Trebecca Investment Partners discussed.
Living is really a, it, it, people have talked about bubbles. You know, is it a bubble? Is AI in a bubble? I think it's not. I think we're in the first innings of, uh, of, the, of an AI boom. And there may be multiple bubbles in it within different sectors. And at the moment, if you look at the uh, Microsofts and uh, all the, the major, the FANG stocks, their commitments to buying NVIDIA services and so on virtually guarantee NVIDIA to grow their earnings by a uh, similar amount as they have for the last two years, which is the 100% a year. And they're on a P of 50 trailing, which is actually cheap. Look, Jason, so watching it from the sidelines of Australian investor, I think, you know, tactically it is a buy. You know, I think uh, talking about the AI trend, the, um, you know, the uh, demand for its product, it's not slowing down. Um, however, uh, for NVIDIA, it is high, hardware producer. The reason it's, um, it's cheap is so highly in demand is because nobody else could get there. Um, its biggest customers are buying so much, you know, based on the demand. Um, they are also investing a lot of money trying to bring their own chip to match the power of what, um, what NVIDIA has. So, you know, so... Now, the question is, how quickly can they close the gap? I've been told, um, you know, it's anywhere between 12 to 18 months, the gap will close. But it depends on what NVIDIA, the next one, um, next to the GPU, that's, which is being delayed, what that looks like. I think I've been told it's two to five times the power of what it is now. Well, let's take a look at those market leaders as we round out this week. And uh, Strike Energy, uh, pick at the bunch there as uh, we're certainly bucking the trend of what we're seeing in the energy sector today. It's up more than 4%. Ingham's also in positive territory. And we mentioned the banks. Macquarie, it's the leader, up uh, to and a quarter percent. As far as those that have dragged, let's uh, take a look. Well, we were just discussing the lithium sector with Grady and uh, once again under big pressure today with the likes of uh, Pilbara and Liontown down uh, 4 or 5% at this point. Taking a look at the smaller end of the uh, of the market there, energy resources. That has been on the move just over the last couple of sessions, up another 30%. And uh, also moving fluents and Santana Minerals. And on the negative side, taking a look at what is moving and it uh, is Wildcat Resources here. Yeah, certainly in the resources sector, we do get these big movements, particularly among the small caps. All right, let's take a look at what is ahead. The key event being US non-farm payrolls jobs tonight. Uh, one of those key planks in the Fed's decision making is it will meet to cut rates a week after next. The question, of course, is by how much, whether it goes 25 or 50. And in terms of the week ahead, let's take a look. We will get a read on uh, China consumer and producer prices for August, as well as uh, Consumer confidence locally for September. Business confidence and those, those conditions also will drop on Tuesday. Then we get the CPI, another plank in the Fed's decision making there on Thursday and some spending insights from CBA there for Thursday as well. So let's uh, recap then where we finished the day and the week. And uh, we finished higher on the day uh, taking a look at the ASX 200, in fact, we're up around a third of a percent to be down 1% for the week. So not a bad outcome given where uh, we saw that very sharp drop on, uh, on Wednesday. All right, that is the COB. Of course, we'll do it all again and get some analysis, particularly of that macro data we're seeing out of the States over the weekend. Join us again on Monday.